I have to say, that actually turned out way better than I was expecting. So, yeah, if you want to see how, stick around. Alright, so ever since that I made this, which is a 3D printed mold for making the carbon uprights and mounts for the rear wing on my car, I've been really curious as to how far can it go? Like, how far can I take 3D printing in the world of single or very limited use composite molds. So we've basically proved that it works in a vacuum bagging application with a basically an open an open mold that you lay into and vacuum bag it down. But then what's this? How far can it go? So this is a compression mold. And what is it a compression mold of? It's a compression mold for mirror covers. Um, I don't need to make these parts. It's literally just a thought that I had and something that I wanted to try. So it's actually two pieces, an outside and an inside. Or you could say this is a female part of the mold and this is a male part of the mold. It has little alignment pins. What it does, it sits together like that with a defined gap around the exterior. So that gap for this is one and a half millimeters. And I figured that out by measuring the cured thickness of two pieces of the 12K carbon that I use for just about everything in its cured position under vacuum bagging. And that came out to about one and a half, 1.8 millimeters. So that's the gap I'm gonna do with this. I'm gonna use two layers, feed it in here, put resin on it and compress it down. And that will take place of the vacuum bagging. Under compression, it's still applying pressure and squeezing out excess resin. So we don't need to have as much kind of post-processing in terms of hecticness and concern. This is set it, forget it, you're done. Climbing pressures don't need to even be that high. You just need the fibers to consolidate under each other. So let's do it. Let's make a carbon mirror cover and see if this actually works or not. And yes, the 3D printer messed up a little bit because I tried to get extra resolution out of the print layers and it didn't work very well. But I have a solution for that. I'm just gonna cover this the openings with plastic sheeting. I've used that in the past. It works really, really well for not having really good layer interface. So let's do it. All right, so we got this all rigged up. We got the clamp on. That's just a 3D printer extrusion. Because as I was trying to clamp it down, I heard some cracking, so I sped it out a little bit. And as you can see, it's actually pushing all the excess resin out. There's a pool under it already, and it's kind of squeezing it out around the edges. So it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It might not be fully compressing down, but at this point, that's okay. As long as this shape is in there, it'll fit on the mirror. So that's what we're going after. So now we wait. All right, so this is the cover right off of the mold. There's some, there's some wrinkles, as you can see, just from the plastic, but that's all just in the resin. So I'm gonna trim this up and sand it down and probably just put another like glass coat, aesthetic coat of resin on top of it, but only after I cut off the excess and sand it down. And then after that, it'll basically be done. All right, it's a day later and this is where we have it. Uh, a majority of the rippling is gone. There's still a little bit kind of on the on the less flat surfaces. So if I really wanted to, I could sand it down and do it again, but I'm plenty happy with this. Um, it's good enough for who it's for, which is myself. And at 10 feet away and moving at not zero miles an hour, it'll look great. So if you learned anything along the way, or you have an idea of what might also be a cool thing to do with this sort of methodology, feel free to like it or comment it down below and I'll see if I can make it happen. Um, I'm really curious to see how far this can go. So if you have any ideas, please let me know.